trespass. Battle your friends with powerful creatures, spectacular spells, and magic's most popular multiplayer format. Form an alliance with Tegwill to enhance your fairy forces and replenish their numbers up with card draw. Amp up your fairy army's strength over time to beguile your foes and overwhelm the board. Wielding charisma like a blade, Tegwill sets his ambitions on the high fate court. It includes collector booster sample pack plus 100 card deck with 10 new cards, a deck box, 10 double-sided token cards, a foil etched display commander, life wheel, strategy insert, and reference card. Now, Enchantment. Waste not. Black enchantment. Whenever an opponent discards a creature card, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Whenever an opponent 
discards a land card, add two black mana. Whenever an opponent discards a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. That's a full art card. I love that. And then we have another full art card, Utopia Sprawl. It's a green aura enchantment. Enchant Forest. As Utopia Sprawl enters the battlefield, choose a color. Whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of the chosen color. It's another full art card, which I love. I feel like that's like Disney Castle vibes. But hollow. <laughs> that's great. I love those. So, let's open up this... see this right like the magic cards are all going supposed to be going one way but they're separate ways like I took a quick peek at the commander to double check this and it's that way but some of the magic cards are the other way around even though all of the other token cards were this way and it was that way when I unwrapped it like it's so strange
a land where you can add tap to add one colorless mana or tap to add blue or black. Activate only if you control a swamp. That's interesting. Path of Ancestry is a land. Path of Ancestry enters the battlefield tapped. Tap effect is add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. When that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, scry one. Myriad Landscape is a land. Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield tapped. Tap to add one colorless mana. By tapping two, tapping this card and sacrificing Myriad Landscape, search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. It is Fairy Conclave, a land. Fairy Conclave enters the battlefield tapped. Tap effect is add one blue mana. And then by tapping one and a blue, Fairy Conclave becomes a 2-1 blue fairy creature with flying until end of turn. It's still a land. Interesting. Demir Aqueduct is a land. Demir Aqueduct enters the battlefield tapped. When Demir Aqueduct enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Tap effect is add blue and black mana. Command tower is a land. Tap effect add one mana of any color in it, your commander's color identity. Pachuca Bog is a land. Pachuca Bog enters the battlefield tapped. When Pachuca Bog enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. Tap effect is add one black mana. Interesting. Wayfarer's Bauble is a artifact, colorless artifact. By tapping two plus this card and sacrificing Wayfarer's Bauble, search your library for a basic land card, then put that card onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle. Talisman of Dominant is a colorless artifact. Tap effect is add one colorless mana. Another tap effect is to add one blue or black mana. Talisman of Dominance deals one damage to you. Interesting. Soul Ring is a colorless artifact with a tap effect of add two colorless mana. Mind Stone is a colorless artifact with a tap effect of add one colorless mana. And by tapping one and this card and sacrificing Mind Stone, draw a card. Velwar Stone is a colorless artifact with the tap effect. Add one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. Interesting. Demir Signet is a colorless artifact. By tapping one and this card, add one blue and black mana. Arcane Signet is a colorless artifact with the tap effect. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Halo Forager is a blue-black fairy rogue creature with flying. When Halo Forager enters the battlefield, you may pay X. When you do, you may cast target instant or sorcery with mana value X from the graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. It says 3-1. Reckless Spite is a black instant. Destroy two target non-black creatures. You lose five life. Snap is a blue instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Untap up to two lands. Run away together is a blue instant. Choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hands. Interesting. Repulse is a blue instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Draw a card. Reconnaissance Mission is a blue enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Cycling two mana. Two mana and discarding this card makes you draw a card. Reality Shift is a blue instant. Exile target creature. Its controller manifests the top card of their library. When that player puts
puts the top card of their library onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. If it's a creature card, it can be turned face up at any time for its mana cost. Interesting. Quickling is a blue fairy rogue creature with flash and flying. When Quickling enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you return another creature you control to its owner's hand. 2-2. Two, two. Opt is a blue instant. Scry one and draw a card. Night Veil Sprite is a blue fairy rogue creature with flying. Whenever Night Veil Sprite attacks, surveil one. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. It has one, two. Watch is a blue instant. Draw a card for each attacking creature. Hypnotic Sprite is a blue fairy creature with mesmeric glare. An adventure instant that costs two mana and a blue mana. Counter target spell with mana value three or less. Then exile this card. You may cast the creature later from your exile. This creature has flying and is 2-1. Frantic Search is a blue instant. Draw two cards, then discard two cards. Untap three lands. Fairy Seer is a blue fairy wizard creature with flying. When Fairy Seer enters the battlefield, scry two. Fact or Fiction is a blue instant. Reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two vials. Put one vial into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Interesting. Distant Melody is a blue sorcery. Choose a creature type. Draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. Consider is a blue instant. Fail one. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Draw a card. Cloud of Fairies is a blue fairy creature with flying. When Cloud of Fairies enters the battlefield, untap up to two lands. Cycling two. Tapping two and discarding this card, you may draw a card. That's one one. Arcane Denial is a blue instant. Counters target spell. Next turn's upkeep. You draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Spell Scorn Coven is a black fairy warlock creature. With flying, when Spell Scorn Coven enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Take it back is a blue instant, adventure instant. Return a target spell to its owner's hand. Exile this card. You may cast the creature from later in exile. It's 2 3. Obira, Dreaming Duelist, is a black, blue fairy warrior, legendary creature with flash and flying. Never another fairy enters the battlefield under your control. Each opponent loses one life. It has 2 2. Spell Stutter is a blue instant counter target spell unless its controller pays 2 plus an additional one for each fairy you control. Ooh, interesting. Picklock Prankster is a blue fairy rogue creature with flying and vigilance. Free the Fae is an adventure is an instant. Mill four cards, then put an instant sorcery or fairy card from among the milled cards into your hand. This has one three. Locking Sprite is a blue fairy rogue creature with flying. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. This two one. Temple of Deceit is a land. Temple of Deceit enters the battlefield tapped. When Temple of Deceit enters the battlefield, scry one. Tap effect is at one blue or black mana. Sunken Hollow is an island swamp land. Tap effect of add one blue or black mana. Sunken Hollow enters the battlefield tapped unless you control. Basic land. It's interesting. Secluded Glen is a land. As Secluded Glen enters. 
enters the battlefield, you may reveal a fairy card from your hand if you don't. Secluded Glen enters the battlefield tapped. Tap effect is out of blue or black mana. Exotic Orchard is a land with a tap effect. Add one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce.
this spell only during the declare blocker's step on an opponent's turn. Remove all attacking creatures from combat and untap them. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Each of those creatures attacks that combat if able. They cannot attack you or planeswalkers you control that combat. Hullbreaker Horror is a blue Kraken Horror creature with flash. This spell can't be countered. Whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one. Return target spell you don't control to its owner's hand. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. This has 7-8. Archmage is a blue fairy wizard creature with flying. For one blue mana and sacrificing Glen Elender Archmage, counter target non creature spell. This has persist. When this creature dies, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. It regularly has two, two. Formulation is a blue fairy creature with flying. By tapping three and a blue mana, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. Draw a card. This has 5-4. Next is Dig Through Time, a blue instant. Delve. Each card you exile from your graveyard while casting the spell pays for one mana. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of the library in any order. That's a lot of mana to be paid. That's eight mana to be paid basically just for scrying. Like, what? Brazen Borrower is a blue fairy rogue creature. With flash and flying, brazen borrower can block only creatures with flying. It also has petty theft and adventure instant. Return target non land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. This has 3 1. Tagwell scoring is a black sorcery. You may cast Tagwell scoring as though it had flash by tapping three untapped creatures you control with flying, in addition to paying its other costs. Destroy all creatures. Create three one one black fairy rogue creature tokens with flying. Interesting. Netling nuisance is a black fairy rogue creature with flying. Whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, that player creates a four two red pirate creature token with this creature can't block. The token is goaded for the rest of the game. It attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. 3 1. Attacks a player other than you. That's interesting. I never thought about attacking myself. That's strange. Fairy Blade Caster is a black fairy rogue creature with flying. Whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, put a plus one plus one counter on Fairy Blade Crafter. When Fairy Blade Crafter dies, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is its power. Oh my gosh, that is amazing, I love that. Blightwing Bandit is a black fairy rogue creature with flying and death touch. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn. Look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. 2-2. Two, two. Oh my gosh, these last few cards sound so good. Shadow Puppeteers is a blue fairy wizard creature with flying and ward 2. When Shadow Puppeteers enters the battlefield, create 2. One, one black fairy rogue creature tokens with flying. Whenever a creature you control with flying attacks, you may have it become a red dragon with base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. In addition to its other colors and types, until end of turn, this has 4-4. Four, four. Misleading 
signpost is a blue artifact with flash. When misleading signpost enters the battlefield during the declare attacker's step, you may reselect which player or permanent target attacking creature is attacking. It cannot attack its controller or their permanents. Tap effect is to add a blue mana. Malleable Imposter is a blue fairy shapeshifter creature with flash and flying. You may have Malleable Imposter enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature an opponent controls, except it is a fairy shapeshifter in addition to its other types, and it has flying. This has zero zero regularly. Archmage of Echoes is a blue fairy wizard creature with flying and ward 2. Whenever you cast a fairy or a wizard permanent spell, you copy it. The copy becomes a token. This has 4-4. Four, four. Alila Cunning Conqueror is a black, blue, fairy, warlock, legendary creature with flying. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, create a 1-1 one, one black fairy rogue creature token with flying Whenever one or more fairies you control, deal combat damage to a player. Code target creature that player controls. This has 2-4. Tagwell, Duke of Splendor, is a black, blue, fairy, noble, legendary creature with flying and death touch. Other fairies you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever another fairy you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. This has 2-3. That is such an interesting effect. And of course we have the display card, which is shiny. And it's the exact same, about the thickness of two, two, maybe three cards. It's a copy of Tegwell, Duke of Splendor. That is so interesting. Like the last one, I'm going to count up the amount of legendary creatures in this deck, just for fun. So of course we've got one and two. as many legendary creatures as the other one, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six different legendary creatures. Although the obvious commander is, of course, Dagwell, Duke of Splendor. But it is interesting how many different legendary 
legendary creatures are in these commander decks. It is interesting how many different legendary creatures are in these commander decks. Now, of course, we've got 100 cards in this deck, plus all of the token cards, which is really interesting. And the two cards from this random booster pack. Now, obviously, we can't really use the green, but we can use Utopia Sprawl, which is a really fun one. So, overall, I think that this was a really, really cool commander set. Let me know, would you play this commander deck as it was, or would you change out any of the cards within it? I hope that you enjoyed this video, and as always, I wish you a good